I remember thinking right away, this is how I want to move. Agon was the first Balanchine Valley that I ever learned. The score wouldn't have existed without the ballet. That's the whole reason it was created. Stravinsky created the music with an actual vision of the ballet. The choreography shows the score very clearly. And you could see it very well because Agon is one of Balanchine's leotard ballets. It's just the raw elements, the music, the dancers, the choreography. That's it. In the Agon solo, you don't stop moving the whole time. There's a lot of leg extensions and really deep plies that you have to move quickly out of. While you're doing all of these really extreme and fast movements with your legs, the top has to be almost seductive a little bit, like a castanet dancer. There's tension in the pas de deux, and I actually think Agon means contest, and that's where that really comes out. I love the end of the pas de deux because there's a drastic change in the music. You get this very Spanish influence again with the mandolin. You don't think it's going to end so swiftly because it's this very gentle moment, and then all of a sudden they come together. I think it's a wonderful moment. When I first was learning Agon, it felt very modern to me. And then when I realized that it was created in 1957, the movement was radical in a way. It's very extreme and provocative. The women are wrapping their legs around the men. The hips are really thrust forward. Splits, lots of splits. <laughs> It's wonderful, I mean, um, because you can see how far the body can go. And the same for the men, too. There's almost no gender difference for the choreography because it's just a display of what the possibilities are. It's a timeless ballet because it's just this feat of human athleticism. That's why Valentin is so wonderful, because he redefined ballet for us. <laughs> <laughs>